I hope you've turned your video settings up to high definition. Here is our original code we were dealing with trying to solve that. Powers of 2, adding powers of 2, multiplying powers of 2, stuff we did in the previous video. Remember our goal here was to pull out the redundant code, which we did. We factored it out, but the problem is when we call from here, we return to here, but then when we call from here, we return not to down here, but up here. All right, and that's all because we do this jump to back one. So no matter where we call this from, we will always jump back to back one, which is not what we want to happen. When we call from here, we want to return to here. When we call from here, we want to return to here. And when we call from anywhere, say we call this function 100,000 times all over in our code, we always want to return back to where we called from. Well, computers aren't dumb. Actually, they are. They're very fast idiots. I've said that before. The architects of computers aren't dumb. And what they did to rectify the situation is they gave us the stack, which I showed you in the previous video. The call instruction, as I mentioned, it's almost identical to doing a jump. In fact, it actually changes the instruction pointer to the address represented by this instruction, which is the first instruction after the label. The labels are only known at assembly time. They vaporize. We've seen them vaporize plenty. So, so a call instruction changes the instruction pointer to the address of that instruction. But it also does one other thing. It pushes the address of the next instruction onto the top of the stack. Thus, we can use that address to come back and execute at the appropriate location. Right, right now we're just hard-coded to jump always to here. But when I call from here, I want to jump back to here. All right, so it's up to us at the end of this piece of code to say, hey, pop EIP. Take that value off the top of the stack, that return address, and put it into the instruction pointer. However, hopefully you're smarter than that and you realize, hey, Jamie, you've tried to do things with the instruction pointer. You cannot access it directly. You have to use those jump instructions or those branching statements to be more general and more computer science-ish. Those branching instructions, you have to use those uh, to change the instruction pointer. You can't directly pop into EIP. In fact, Control-Shift-B, build this, and you can see, hey, I, I don't know what the EIP is. And we got an error here. All right, so instead what I'm going to type is RET, which is short for return. And that does exactly this. Right? It pops the instruction pointer. Whatever value is at the top of the stack, it pops it into the instruction pointer. All right, we've seen return right here. In, a, in previous videos, I've said, hey, it just takes us back to C++ land. Well, that's how it takes us back to C++ land. The code generated by C++ in this short but sweet main function, it basically takes the value at the top of the stack, pops it into the instruction pointer, and that's how we get back to C++ land. It's like Hansel and Grinnell dropping their crumbs, except, uh, well, actually, that's a good analogy. We'll use that in a future video. Crumbs can get destroyed, and then you lose your way, and, and so uh, we'll get into that in a different video. Pop it off into the instruction pointer. Let's go back to where we want to go. Let's, let's, let's run this program and, and illustrate this. I'm going to change this back to a call, F11. Control Alt D and hey look did you notice I always skipped over a call right here but call into the code assembled by our assembler do it All right call that address anyway F11 here's our do it code our assembly code F11 F11 here's another call call to do it plus 2D hex which the result is 3 3D out here 0 3D this whole value let's look for it 0A51 well they're all 0A51 0 3d hex. Here's the beginning of our our function we made in assembly. Remember this calculate next power. We're calling out to that. So I'll go back to the disassembly. And again, the call that will change the instruction pointer right here to this address right here. But it will also push the address of the next instruction to the top of the stack or where we want to return to when we do a return. Well, let's go examine the stack. I'm going to uh, look at our stack pointer here, grab this, control C, paste it down here, put a hex on the end, hit enter, and here is the top of our stack. I, well, you can <laughs> here's the first four bytes, and here's the next four bytes, so on and so forth. I'm going to scroll up 
because this will be the part of the stack where we push this instruction to. So two things will happen. The instruction pointer will change, as we've seen with the jump, and then this will change to this value here. But remember, we are dealing with a little NDN processor, so it'll be byte swapped. F11, sure enough, they changed. 00A5101F, like so. That's where we want to return to. But in the meantime, let's do our raised to our power code, and then here's the return, which simply pops this value back into the instruction pointer, so our instruction pointer will change to 00A5101F. Watch this as I hit F11, F11, there you go, 05110, all that stuff. Hey, look, we're back! We returned back to where we came from. This is where we came from, and now we're back to here. Let's do our code here. and Oh, let's do the call again! Well, this time we're going to push this address onto the stack. All right, we're going to go back to the same function as always, but this is the address we're going to push onto the stack, and that will be put right here. So watch. All this will remain the same, but then we have a new return location here. It'll be uh, 2D instead of 1F. So watch, watch that 1F change. F11, there we go. There's our 2D. And then here we go. We run through our code there in, in the... Raise the next power code, increment, return. Now, we're going to return back to where we came from, the proper place. We're no longer jumping back to the very beginning of the program. Now, this time, we have a different address sitting at the top of the stack. All right, the stack is referencing this address right here. And if, if you don't believe me, remember, we're counting downwards here. So here's B0, and then here's AF, AE. A, D, A, C. So the stack pointer is pointing to this byte right here, but we're going to pop all four of those off as our next instruction, instruction address. This will get popped into the instruction pointer. So watch the instruction pointer. It will change to 00A5102D, so that will only change these last two ones because the rest are all set, or last two ones, because the rest are all set appropriately. So this 4F will change to a 2D F11, there you go, there's 2D. We're back! We're back to where we came from. How nice is that? How nice is that? So, there you go. It's a simple structure, the stack. But it allows us to save a value, get in, do our business, return back to where we came from, so that sort of thing. And as we examine procedures, as they're called, these functions, as they're called in high-level languages, procedures, as they're called in assembly language, as we examine them further, we'll see the stack is critically important for local memory and that kind of thing. But anyway, there you go. That's We've solved our problem. We now return back to where we came from, call it from here, we'll get back to here, call it from here, we'll get back to here. How do we know? Because we push those addresses onto the stack before we jump into this function, and then when this function's done, it does a return, which takes that value off the top of the stack and pushes it into the instruction pointer.